Life's challenges can feel like overwhelming mountains, looming over us with their intimidating presence. We often find ourselves at the base, feeling small and overwhelmed, unsure of how to begin the climb. In these moments, we might feel alone, ill-equipped and desperate for a way forward. My friends, these emotions are shared by all of us, reaching every human heart at some stage of life. Today, I want to share with you the transformative power of inviting God into our difficulties. I'm also going to pray a powerful prayer with you in the mighty name of Jesus. So watch until the end and open your hearts to receive the blessings of this prayer. Now we've all faced situations that seem beyond our strength, wisdom, or resources. Perhaps it's a health crisis that blindsided you, leaving you reeling and uncertain about the future. Or maybe it's a financial setback that's shaken your sense of security and stability. It could be a relationship breakdown that left you questioning your worth and direction. Whatever the difficulty, the weight of it can feel crushing, suffocating our hope and dimming our vision for the future. But my dear friends, I have good news for you today. You don't have to face these mountains alone. There is one who stands ready to climb with you, to guide your steps and to lend you his strength. As we read in Isaiah 41, verse 10, Fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. Yes, I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. As we reflect on these powerful words, let them sink deep into your heart. God is not only with you in the valley, but he is also the one who will uphold you as you climb each mountain that life presents. Let's journey together and discover how God's involvement can turn our trials into triumphs. My friends, when we face difficulties, our first instinct is often to retreat, to isolate ourselves, or to rely solely on our own strength. We might feel ashamed of our struggles, believing we should be able to handle them on our own. Or perhaps we fear burdening others with our problems, so we suffer in silence. But my friends, this is not the way God intends for us to live. He created us for relationship, not just with each other, but primarily with Him. Our Creator longs to be involved in every aspect of our lives, including our hardships. In Jeremiah 29, verse 12, we read, Then you will call upon me and go and pray to me, and I will listen to you. This verse reminds us that God is not distant or uninterested in our struggles. He is attentive, ready to listen, and eager to be invited into our situations. When we invite God into our difficulties, we're acknowledging that we need Him. This act of humility opens the door for His power to work in our lives. It's like turning on a light switch in a dark room. Suddenly, everything becomes clearer. God's presence enlightens our path, revealing solutions we might have missed on our own. His wisdom guides our decisions, ensuring we don't stumble blindly through our challenges. My friends, we need to rely on God's understanding rather than our limited perspective. When we invite God into our difficulties, we're tapping into an infinite source of wisdom and guidance. It's like having access to the ultimate instruction manual for life, one that's tailored specifically to our unique situations. But inviting God into our difficulties does more than just provide guidance. It also brings comfort in our pain and strength in our weakness. In 2 Corinthians 12, verse 9, Paul shares God's words to him, My grace is sufficient for you, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. 
When we're at our weakest, God's strength shines brightest. By inviting Him into our difficulties, we're allowing His strength to fill the gaps where our own strength falls short. This doesn't mean our problems will instantly disappear, but it does mean we won't face them alone. God's presence provides a peace that surpasses understanding. Even in the midst of turmoil, it's like having a steady anchor in a stormy sea. The waves may still crash around us, but we remain secure. Inviting God into our difficulties also changes our perspective. Instead of seeing our challenges as insurmountable obstacles, we begin to view them as opportunities for growth. In James 1 verses 2 to 3, we're told, My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into various trials, knowing that the testing of your faith produces patience. With God, by our side, our difficulties become training grounds for developing godly character. They're no longer just problems to be solved, but experiences that can shape us into who God created us to be. This shift in perspective can transform our entire approach to life's challenges. Instead of dreading difficulties, we can face them with confidence, knowing that God is with us and will use them for our good. It's like viewing life through a new lens, one that sees the potential for growth and blessing in every situation. Inviting God into our difficulties also opens the door for miraculous interventions. Throughout the Bible, we see examples of God working in extraordinary ways when His people turn to Him in their times of need. Think of the Israelites trapped between the Egyptian army and the Red Sea. In their moment of desperation, they cried out to God, and He parted the waters, providing a way where there seemed to be no way. Or consider Paul and Silas, in prison for preaching the gospel. Instead of despairing, they invited God into their difficulty through prayer and praise. And what was the result? An earthquake that shook open the prison doors and led to the jailer's salvation. These stories remind us that when we invite God into our difficulties, we're inviting the Creator of the universe, the one for whom nothing is impossible, to work on our behalf. This doesn't mean God will always dramatically intervene in our situations. Sometimes His work is more subtle, providing peace in the storm, wisdom for decisions, or strength to endure. But regardless of how He chooses to work, we can trust that His involvement will always be for our ultimate good. Let us now focus on embracing our vulnerability before God. My friends, inviting God into our difficulties requires a willingness to be vulnerable. It means laying bare our hearts before Him, acknowledging our weaknesses and fears. This can be uncomfortable, especially if we're used to putting on a brave face for the world. But God doesn't want our polished, perfect selves. He wants our authentic, broken selves. In Psalm 34, verse 18, we're assured, The Lord is near to those who have a broken heart and saves such as have a contrite spirit. This verse reminds us that God is drawn to our brokenness, not repelled by it. When we're willing to be vulnerable with God, we create space for His healing and restoration. It's in our moments of raw honesty that we often experience God's presence most powerfully. Consider the story of Jonah, a prophet who initially ran from God's call. It wasn't until Jonah found himself in the belly of a great fish, at his lowest point, that he cried out to God. In Jonah 2, verse 2, we read, I cried out to the Lord because of my affliction, and He answered me. Jonah's vulnerability in his distress opened the door for God's intervention and redemption. Similarly, when we invite God into our difficulties with open hearts, 
we position ourselves for his transformative work. Being vulnerable with God also means surrendering our need for control. Often, we try to manage our difficulties on our own, believing we know best how to handle them. But true invitation of God into our situations requires letting go of our plans and embracing His. In Proverbs 19, verse 21, we're reminded, There are many plans in a man's heart. Nevertheless, the Lord's counsel, that will stand. When we release our grip on our problems and hand them over to God, we allow His perfect will to unfold in our lives. This surrender can be challenging, especially when God's ways don't align with our expectations. But it's in these moments of surrender that we often see God work in the most amazing ways. Think of Mary, the mother of Jesus, who surrendered her plans and reputation when she accepted God's call to bear the Messiah. Her response in Luke 1 verse 38 is a beautiful example of vulnerability and surrender. Behold the maidservant of the Lord. Let it be to me according to your word. Mary's willingness to be vulnerable before God opened the door for the greatest miracle in human history. Similarly, when we invite God into our difficulties with open hands and hearts, we create space for His miraculous work in our lives. Another aspect of vulnerability before God is honesty about our emotions. Sometimes we might feel angry, disappointed, or frustrated with God because of our difficulties. It's tempting to hide these feelings, believing they're inappropriate or disrespectful. But God wants us to be real with Him, to pour out our hearts without reservation. The Psalms are full of examples of this kind of raw honesty before God. In Psalm 13, verses 1 to 2, David cries out, How long, O Lord, will you forget me forever? How long will you hide your face from me? How long shall I take counsel in my soul, having sorrow in my heart daily? David doesn't hold back his feelings of abandonment and frustration. Yet, by the end of the psalm, he's affirming his trust in God's unfailing love. This progression shows us that being vulnerable with our emotions before God can lead to renewed faith and hope. When we invite God into our difficulties, we can bring all our messy, complicated feelings with us. He's big enough to handle our doubts, our anger, and our pain. In fact, He welcomes this honesty as it deepens our relationship with Him. Being vulnerable before God also means admitting our need for help. In our self-reliant culture, asking for help can feel like weakness. But in God's economy, Acknowledging a need for Him is the pathway to true strength. In 2 Corinthians 12, verse 10, Paul declares, For when I am weak, then I am strong. This paradox lies at the heart of the Christian faith. Our weakness becomes the conduit for God's strength. When we invite God into our difficulties by admitting our inability to handle them alone, we tap into His limitless power and resources. It's like plugging into an infinite power source. Suddenly, we have access to strength far beyond our own capabilities. Vulnerability before God also involves trusting His timing. Often, we want immediate solutions to our problems. We pray, inviting God into our difficulties, and then grow impatient when He doesn't resolve things on our timetable. But part of being vulnerable is acknowledging that God's perspective is infinitely broader than ours. In Isaiah 55 verses 8 to 9, God reminds us, For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are your ways my ways, says the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, 
so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. Trusting God's timing requires us to vulnerably admit that we don't always know what's best. It means holding on to faith even when circumstances don't seem to be improving. My dear friends, inviting God into our difficulties with vulnerability may feel risky. It requires us to let down our guards, be honest about our weaknesses and needs. But it's in this place of openness that we experience the depth of God's love and the extent of His power. As we learn to be vulnerable before Him, we'll find that our difficulties become opportunities for profound spiritual growth and intimacy with our Creator. My friends, when we invite God into our difficulties, we will begin to see remarkable changes in our lives. These changes, or fruits, are evidence of God's transformative work within us. Let's explore some of these fruits and how they manifest in our lives. The first fruit we often see is peace that surpasses understanding. In Philippians 4 verses 6 to 7, we're told, Be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. When we invite God into our difficulties, He replaces our anxiety with His peace. This doesn't mean our problems instantly vanish, but we find a calmness in the midst of the storm. It's like having an invisible shield that protects our hearts from being overwhelmed by our circumstances. Another fruit is supernatural strength to endure. Isaiah 40, verse 31, promises, But those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. When we partner with God in our difficulties, He infuses us with His strength. We find ourselves able to persevere through challenges that once seemed insurmountable. It's like tapping into a divine energy source that never runs dry. We also experience growth in our faith. Romans 5 verses 3 to 4 tells us, and not only that, but we also glory in tribulations, knowing that tribulation produces perseverance, and perseverance, character, and character hope. As we invite God into our difficulties and witness His faithfulness, our trust in Him deepens. Our faith becomes more robust, able to withstand greater challenges. It's like a muscle that grows stronger with each workout. Another fruit is increased, wisdom and discernment. James 1 verse 5 encourages us. If any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask of God, who gives to all liberally and without reproach, and it will be given to him. When we invite God into our difficulties, he grants us wisdom to navigate complex situations. We begin to see our challenges from his perspective, making better decisions. It's like having access to a divine GPS that guides us through life's twists and turns. We also experience a deepening of our prayer life. Jeremiah 33, verse 3, invites us. Call to me, and I will answer you, and show you great and mighty things, which you do not know. As we continually invite God into our difficulties, our communication with Him becomes more frequent and intimate. Prayer shifts from a religious duty to a lifeline we can't live without. It's like having a direct hotline to the Creator of the universe. Another fruit is an increased awareness of God's presence. Psalm 34 verse 18 assures us, The Lord is near to those who have a broken heart, and saves such as have a contrite spirit. 
When we invite God into our difficulties, we become more attuned to His constant presence in our lives. We start to recognize His hand at work in even the smallest details. It's like developing a spiritual sixth sense that perceives God's activity all around us. We also experience growth in our compassion for others. 2 Corinthians 1 verse 4 tells us, Who comforts us in all our tribulation, that we may be able to comfort those who are in any trouble with the comfort with which we ourselves are comforted by God. As we navigate difficulties with God, we become more empathetic towards others facing similar challenges. Our trials equip us to naturally minister to others more effectively. It's like receiving training to become spiritual first responder. Another fruit is a shift in our perspective. Romans 8 verse 28 reminds us, and we know that all things work together for good to those who love God, to those who are called according to His purpose. When we invite God into our difficulties, we start to see our challenges as opportunities for growth rather than mere obstacles. We develop an eternal perspective that looks beyond our current circumstances. It's like viewing life through a wide-angle lens seeing the bigger picture of God's work in our lives. We also experience an increase in our capacity to love. 1 John 4 verse 19 states, We love Him because He first loved us. As we experience God's love and care, through our difficulties, our own capacity to love expands. We become more patient, more forgiving, more willing to extend grace to others. It's like our hearts are enlarged, able to contain and express more of God's love. Furthermore, we experience a deepening of our worship. Psalm 34 verse 1 declares, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. When we invite God into our difficulties and witness His faithfulness, our worship becomes more genuine and heartfelt. We learn to praise God, not just in good times, but in challenging times as well. It's like our lives become a constant song of praise to our faithful God. My dear friends, these fruits are not exhaustive, but they give us a glimpse of the transformative power of inviting God into our difficulties. As we partner with Him in our challenges, we find ourselves being shaped more and more into His image. Our difficulties become the very soil in which these beautiful fruits grow and flourish. So let us not shy away from our challenges, but boldly invite God into them. For it's often in these difficult seasons that we experience the most profound growth and the sweetest communion with our loving Father. Now, to all those within the sound of my voice, let us go to the Lord in prayer. I want you to pray this prayer with me or listen to this prayer in faith so that you can have all the blessings of this prayer. Let us pray to our gracious and loving God. Heavenly Father, Almighty God, I come before your throne of grace with thanksgiving and praise. Your majesty fills the earth, your power shakes the mountains, and your love reaches to the heavens. I praise you for your infinite wisdom, your unfailing mercy, and your boundless compassion. Lord, you are the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, the author and finisher of my faith. I thank you for your constant presence in my life, for your guiding hand through every storm. I'm grateful for your unwavering love that pursues me even when I stray. Oh Lord, thank you for inviting me into a deep personal relationship with you. Merciful Father, 
I confess my sins before you, and I ask for your forgiveness. Lord, I also choose to forgive those who have hurt me, releasing them into your hands. Lord Jesus, I invite you into every difficulty that I may face today. I surrender my struggles, my fears, my doubts, and my pain to you. Help me to be vulnerable before you, to trust you completely with every aspect of my life. Lord, I am grateful that no trial is too great for you. In the name of Jesus, I rebuke every spirit of fear and anxiety, and I bind the enemy's attempts to make me doubt your goodness and faithfulness. Father, transform my trials into triumphs for your glory. Use my difficulties as opportunities to deepen my faith, strengthen my character, and draw me closer to you. Grant me your peace that surpasses all understanding as I navigate through life's storms. Lord, I ask for your healing touch upon every area of my life, physical, emotional, and spiritual. Protect me from the attacks of the enemy from discouragement, from despair, from doubt. Shield me from the fiery darts of the evil one and help me to stand firm in my faith. Bless me with wisdom to make godly decisions, with strength to persevere, and with hope that never fades. Lord, pour out these same blessings upon my loved ones. Let them experience your peace, your strength, and your guidance in their lives. Draw them closer to you through every circumstance they face. Lord, as I say this prayer, together with everyone listening, I am grateful for every heart that is opening before you right now. We come in agreement, lifting up each other before your throne of grace. We declare that you are greater than any difficulty we face. We claim victory over our circumstances in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, we ask for a fresh outpouring of your Holy Spirit, empowering us to face our challenges with courage and faith. Protect us, guide us, and use us for your glory, O God. Let our lives be living testimonies of your faithfulness and power. For yours is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Thank you, Lord, for hearing and answering my prayer. In the mighty name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. If you were blessed by this message, type the word Amen in the comments section below. I declare that all the blessings of this prayer are now upon you in the name of Jesus. You can help us to reach more persons and spread the gospel. You can do this by sharing the video with a friend or family member who you know needs the blessing of this prayer and by clicking the like button. Also remember, to subscribe to our daily Jesus devotional channel for more videos that will bless your heart and uplift your spirit. We appreciate all those who support us. You're blessed to be a blessing. Now, for those who are listening and you want to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, I urge you to receive God's grace with an open and repentant heart. Start where you are. Your past doesn't matter. Jesus came to seek and to save those that are lost. God loves you. It is not God's will that anyone should perish, but for all to come to repentance. Say this simple salvation prayer for yourself. Dear Lord Jesus, I know that I am a sinner, and I ask for your forgiveness. I believe you died for my sins and rose from the dead. I turn from my sins and invite you to come into my heart and life. I want to trust and follow you as my Lord and Savior. Lord Jesus, hear my prayer, I pray. Thank you, Lord, for saving me. Amen.
Now that you have prayed this prayer, you can ask a pastor to baptize you at a local church and make that decision public. Baptism is a symbol of that decision to follow Jesus. I then encourage you to have fellowship with other believers, to learn more about your new life, and to get to know more about God. Please feel free to leave your prayer request in the comment section so that we can present them before God for your blessings and victory. Also, we invite other believers on the YouTube platform and all over the world to join us and start praying for you right now. And we want you to know that even if you don't see a reply to your prayer request, it doesn't mean that you were not prayed for. Rest assured that we are actively lifting up each request to God that is in accordance with His will. We believe in the power of prayer to bring comfort, healing, and guidance in accordance with God's perfect plan. To God be all the glory. May the grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all.